Ahinsa is the highest um, form of spirituality. Right. Because um, even truth comes second. Ahimsa first. Because right. truth can be sharp. Mm. Truth can hurt. Truth can uh, can kind of upset people. And that's non, not non-violence. So mm. I was taught as a Jain monk even to think non-violently, yeah. speak non-violently, and yeah. act non-violently. That was my training. And right. my guru taught me a sloka, mm. Satyam Bruyat, Priyam Bruyat, Mabruyat satya mapriyam. That means that even if when you speak, you speak sweetly. Sweet words are non-violent words. If you speak violent words, harsh words, upsetting words, that's violence. You do not hurt anybody's feeling. Yeah. Be hurting somebody's feeling is violence. That was the training of a Jain monk. And for nine years, I was in that training. Principle of non-violence is based on reciprocity. You take from nature and give back something to nature. So taking food is not violence. Making clothes is not violence. Building a house is not violence. But when you cut down one tree, you say, thank you tree for giving me your body to make my home. I am grateful. And then you plant five trees so that trees can grow. So that is non-violence. Jain non-violence is not uh, um, right. just uh, not taking. Jain violence is your mind, your yeah. consciousness, your thinking. Okay. What is your motivation? What is your intention? That is determining factor of non-violence. Uh, these nuclear weapons and war preparation and arms race, that is the greatest symbol of violence in the world. What more violent there can be more than a nuclear bomb. I decided to walk from the grave of Mahatma Gandhi, who was one of the greatest symbol and greater apostle of non-violence. So I started from the grave of Mahatma Gandhi in Rajghat, New Delhi. And then I walked through uh, India to Baga border. Then I walked through Pakistan, uh, Lahore, Rawalpindi, Peshawar, over the Khyber Pass and then into Afghanistan, and I walked to Kabul, and over the Hindu Kush mountains, up to about 12,000 feet high mountains, and a lot of blisters, and a lot of uh, um, knee pain, and all that. And sometimes uh, I, I remained vegetarian. And so sometimes I had to be go hungry, or eat just bread and tea, nothing else, or some fruit. So that was 8,000 miles long peace pilgrimage, and I did it as a Jain monk. Because as a kind of aparigraha, no money at all, not yeah. a single rupee. When we met Bertrand Russell, uh, he said uh, to us that you have walked from India to England without any, any money. That I can understand. It's a great thing to do, but it's all land so you could walk. But you can't walk over the Atlantic. How are you going to get there? So can I give you some money? He offered us some money. But I said, Lord Russell... We have not touched money for two years. And so we don't want any money. But if you would like to help us with two tickets in, uh, in a boat, and we don't want to fly, we'll, we'll go by boat. So he helped us to, to raise money and, and collect money. And so he helped us to get two tickets in the Queen Mary. Martin Luther King was a truly uh, um, an embodiment of nonviolence, a, a kind of example of nonviolence. He carried no uh, revenge. He carried no um, kind of any kind of anger, no yeah. any kind of anxiety, and no any kind of fear. He was totally fearless. At Schumacher College, we have received more than 15,000 students from all over the world, and you are one of them. And when our students leave the college, I always advise them that when you go in the world, don't look for a job. Don't seek employment, but create your own job. Because most of the jobs you get in the world today are very violent. Our jobs are very violent to nature. We exploit nature. We damage nature. We harm nature. Whereas our job should be to enhance nature and enhance human conditions. At the moment, we in the world see nature 
only as a resource for the economy, natural resources. Whereas at Schumacher College, we are teaching our young people to um, see nature not as a resource for the economy, but as a source of life itself. So I would ask all young people not to underestimate their capacity. Every person is a potential leader. A leader is not a special kind of person, but every person, every young person is a special kind of leader. So cultivate your leadership qualities and lead the world to a better place so that we have a minimal violence, minimal racism, minimal uh, materialism and maximum love and compassion and kindness and humanity and generosity and arts and culture and music and poetry and many, many wonderful other things we can have.